Super Mario O RPG is the only game just for me, and it's also a remake of the SNES title sharing the same name. But that's kind of weird because I think the new title should have been called Little Guy RPG. Cause look at that, look at that little guy. Everyone's a little guy in this title. Mario's a little guy, Toad's a little guy, even Peach, she's an honorary little guy. When it comes to remakes, there's always this giant fear of will it be faithful to the original? Lots of remakes like to make their own weird dialogue or stylistic choices like the Demon Souls remake turning fat officials into boomers from Left 4 Dead. Or Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl being abominations and gigantic cash grabs. But when it comes to the Mario RPG remake, it really is just the Mario RPG remade. Outside of obviously the updated visuals, the only changes I've really seen is the Bruce Lee name drop being gone and that Valentina doesn't have her like 90s anime took a breath jiggle physics. Outside of that, pretty much everything's the same. So if you never played the original, Super Mario RPG was the first in the kind of turn-based titles for the series. And part of the charm was the introduction of the action commands. You could time button presses to help hit harder or defend damage, essentially adding a bit more activity to the somewhat hands-off approach turn-based games tend to take. New to the remake is the buff that perfect action command timing will be even stronger and release a shockwave to damage other enemies. This mostly just helps to speed up combat because you can be facing a lot of foes at once. It seems like the window for action commands is much larger, but the perfect timing seems like it's on par with the original. On top of that, there is a team attack gauge that fills up the more you pull off action commands. When filled, you can play a pre-rendered cutscene to smack some fools with a powerful attack that changes with your lineup, which also determines the buffs that you can receive by not missing action commands and creating a combo chain. You can only have three members out at once, but in this remake, if by chance you do perish, you have the ability to swap out one of your reserves, essentially making your party more active. In the original, once I got Peach, Gino, and Mario, I never saw the other characters ever again, and I didn't bother equipping them with anything. But I can see the benefit to keeping everyone up to snuff in this one, especially since party members not in the active lineup still get experience. Also, the level up screen, it it's so adorable. I I love it. I love all of these little guys. Look at their little dance. Speaking of, the game has a fantastic cast of characters, some classics and a lot of new. This story is pretty cookie cutter. Batty shows up, get the X amount of MacGuffins, and new character will guide the way. But the new characters do have their own plot lines, so they feel more unique and complete as characters than, say, Bobby from Origami King, who was literally just designed to check all of the boxes on the manufactured sad scene from a pointless sacrifice algorithm. You can boom me about that, but I'm right. It is definitely going to be interesting seeing all the people who clamored for Gino and Smash playing his game for the first time. Like, don't get me wrong, Gino is a very cool character. I love his design, and I kind of wish we got to know more about him. But I also think Mallow kind of gets shafted in the community. Although, that's probably because in-game, most people kick him out of the party when Bowser shows up. Maybe it's biased too, but there's a point of me that will always be disappointed in Gino, because if they would have just picked the Peach doll, we could have had two Peach. Maybe more. Anyways, it's so nice seeing such variety in the characters and even base NPCs after the Toad Apocalypse we had to suffer through. And the dialogue of the game is just so much fun. This Mario might actually be my favorite rendition of the Paisano. Not only is he a little guy, but he's just such a scrapper in this title. He's always trying to leap in a battle and throw hands with everyone. Like he was canonically going to smack a child before getting stopped. The little sequences of Mario and friends reenacting the more in-depth cutscenes always just makes me kind of giggle. The remake does have some beautiful cutscenes for big events and character intros, but they can feel kind of awkward. One of my complaints of this game is it seems to be lacking sound effects. Granted, it's very true to the original because that didn't have a whole lot of sound effects and cutscenes and stuff. But some of them can just be really awkward with no extra sound effects or voices. They just kind of flap their lips while text appears. It was awkward in Pokemon and it's awkward in this. Bring back Mario Sunshine voices. Even the dialogue boxes are silent. Like there's nothing for progressing text. The most obnoxious silence would have to be the boss intros. They all look amazing in this, but they don't get like any extra sound sound effects. Like, Boyer pulling his string doesn't have, like, a twang or anything. It's just a soundtrack over an animation. I wasn't really expecting voices, but I was at least expecting something to kind of, like, make it blend a little better. On another level, there's weird choices like having Bowser's laugh and the Yoshis have some of their canned voice clips, but no one else. I felt like they should have either kept all the sound effects the same or redone all of them. The game does a nice job of breaking up the general JRPG monotony by frequently having charming little minigames. They have a good variety too, with some bringing you to like a completely different plane of gameplay. The cart minigame can screw itself though. Why do I have to go like zero miles an hour on some turns and not others? Ironic transition, but I will say, the game 
game is way too easy now. With the gauge buffs, team attacks, AoE action commands, and increased inventory, I don't think anyone with a brain will really struggle in this game at all. Especially when you factor in that it has an even easier mode. I really wish that they included a hard mode alongside that. Granted, it could be an unlockable, maybe, but that'd be stupid in a remake since most are probably playing this for a second time already. You also can't turn off the AoE effect from perfect action commands, so unless you purposely mess up timing, there's no way to really avoid that, like, difficulty change. As someone who played lots of the Paper Mario or Mario & Luigi series, some of the action command timings are weird. I'm used to having most of the action commands be, like, when something connects. A few of the moves the characters have are, like, right before either a kick or a throw. The game does have a visual tell now, since it was a bit confusing in the original. My fight or flight always kicks in when the enemy jumps at me because I assume they were attacking me, like, immediately. But most jump to a character to be like, hey, this is who I'm attacking, and, uh, all right, here comes the attack. In terms of new content, there is now a post-game which allows you to refight some of the bosses, but there's nothing really, like, too in-depth. Like, no unlockable character or brother. Someone who should have been in the game in the first place. There's also the Bestiary, which is a very nice addition, showing off stats and weaknesses and allowing you to play their animations with some flavor text here and there. You can fill this out by using Malo's ability, or in the post-game, you can use frog coins to fill in the missing entries. All in all, the title is a very faithful remake of the original. If you haven't played that one, you should definitely definitely pick this up, assuming that you like turn-based RPGs. It really does just update the game for play on a modern console without tarnishing the feel or fun of the original. It's definitely shaping up to be a good time for Mario RPG fans. Hopefully, if this and the upcoming Thousand Year Door remake sells well, we can get another traditional RPG entry in the series. Like, despite what I said earlier, I did still enjoy Origami King, but I don't think I would shed a single tear if I never saw another entry like that and instead just got a lot more entries like this. You can obviously enjoy any of the titles in the series more than others. Everyone has their preferences. And whereas I am trying to be nicer nowadays and toning down the my opinion is right vibe that I unfortunately give off a lot in my videos, you are factually incorrect if you ever try and tell me that Sticker Star is better than this or Thousand Year Door.